I'm delighted to announce that WHO has the honor of working with Kim Sledge of the legendary group Sister Sledge and Natasha Mudhar, founder of the World We Want organization. Together, we read... ...announced yesterday that he tested positive for COVID-19. Yeah, thank you, Sophie. Uh, Dr. Ryan will take this question. Dr. Ryan, you have the floor. Sure, and uh, our sympathies uh, regarding that positive case again. Uh, we're always troubled to learn of, of COVID-19 and leaders, uh, especially given their need to leave, but also for them and, and, and their families. Um, <clears throat> with regard to South Africa, South Africa is in a sort of steady state. South Africa has come down off a very high level of transmission, uh, down to levels uh, approaching earlier parts of the year. and. Uh, uh, currently is, I think, reporting about uh, uh, 11,000 cases uh, weekly, <clears throat> about 189 uh, new cases per million uh, population, and uh, very little change in either the number of cases or the rate <clears throat> of deaths. So in that steady state, and you've seen other countries in the Northern Hemisphere reach that steady state and then start to track back upwards. And I think this is what we really need to try and avoid, uh, if we can, that avoid that inexorable move towards uh, more transmission. When you look across Africa as a whole, there's a mixed pattern. Uh, in general, uh, in the continent, the overall um, <clears throat> situation for Sub-Saharan Africa, for the WHO Regional Office for Africa, uh, is about uh, 31,473 cases for the week, about 1.3 cases, 1.3% uh, of new global cases, uh, and one, or just over a thousand deaths uh, in in the in the countries in our Afro, Afro region, representing 2.9% of new global deaths. So you can see there, uh, the cases may certainly be underreported. We don't believe the deaths to be uh, as grossly <clears throat> underreported, and therefore Africa, as a whole, is still very very uh, low down on the impact. Um, side of COVID, but the impacts in Africa are being generated by other losses, socioeconomic and healthcare losses as well. So Africa is suffering, development is suffering, society is suffering and making lots of sacrifices to keep this disease uh, under control. So yes, <clears throat> there is a chance and we do know from the emerging, and Maria may speak to the, the availability of seroprevalence data in, in Africa, it's, not, it's patchy enough. But again, we're not seeing huge numbers of percentage of the population having history of exposure. So there is still a long way for this pandemic to go in South Africa, in the rest of Africa. Um, but uh, we do believe that the young age profile, the community focus of, of the intervention so far, um, and the ability to do good uh, case finding and contact tracing has helped African countries uh, in stemming the, the worst of this so far. But again, we've seen countries do okay in the first wave, and many countries may have just received a glancing blow. And we don't know to what extent, in some, t in some cases, uh, countries got it right, and in other cases, countries were just a little bit luckier than others. But what we're seeing now is the second wave, if you, even if you look at Asia and South Asia, Southeast Asia, we're seeing countries that were very little affected in the first sort of wave being more affected now. And again, in Africa, we're seeing some countries that had very few cases in the first wave are seeing more activity now than they saw before. Uh, so therefore, it's really, really hard to predict uh, what the next wave holds for any country. But what South Africa has done, uh, and to its great credit, it has crushed that curve. It has saved a lot of lives as many other countries have. The real question now is the extra effort it's going to take to keep that number low, to keep pushing that number down and down and down relentlessly until you reach enough control so that other measures and restrictions on people's lives and livelihoods can be released and that the public health uh, action linked to the community action is enough to keep this disease under control. Thank you. I, th I think uh, Dr. Van Karkov would like to supplement. Yeah, Thank just you. very briefly, just to say um, that there is no inevitable second wave that needs to happen. And I think that many countries which have, as Mike has pointed out, you know, using um, the systems that are in place, and, and many countries in Africa are, are in this position where they have either prevented an outbreak from happening or have crushed the curve. And so there is no inevitable second wave that needs to happen 
because all of the systems that you have in place and South Africa has put in place, many countries across Africa, all the diverse countries that are there that are using the system for active case finding, for isolation of cases, for quarantining of contacts, for using the testing system, the facilities that are in place, for getting rapid turnaround tests back as, as quickly as possible, for using the hospital systems that have been established for providing optimal cl clinical care. All of that will help prevent a second wave. And I think if there's one thing that we can say to everyone, and, and we've said this many times um, you know, over the summer in the Northern Hemisphere and others, is use your time wisely. In the time that you have brought these outbreaks under control, stay ready, prepare for more, because there could be another wave. And with um, this, the global interconnected world that we continue to have, um, the virus needs people, it needs clusters you know, to, to transmit in, and you could be prepared for that. Um, and I, I think one of the things we need to emphasize as much as we possibly can, the importance of the isolation of cases and quarantining of contacts. And you hear us say this over and over again, but it might be worth mentioning that quarantining of contacts means that individuals ideally could be quarantined outside of their home, but we know that that's not possible all over the world. Quarantining at home for 14 days, that means not going to work. It means not going to the grocery store. It means not socializing with friends. It means not having people over at your home. Um, and people who are in quarantine need to be supported through that because, of course, they still need to make a living. They still need to provide food for their families. So it's really important that those who are in quarantine, those who are isolated as cases and those who are in quarantine are supported through that period. This will break chains of transmission. And without isolation of cases, without quarantining of contacts, it will be incredibly impossible to do. So um, really, I think we just need to emphasize what that means. And I've had a lot of questions over the last few days from family and friends about what quarantine actually means. And I think it's just worth emphasizing what we mean there. But I wanted to just highlight that there is no inevitable second wave or next peak. It's within our, it's within our control, it's within our hands um, as individuals, but also with strong government leadership, clear national plans, implemented with targeted controlled measures um, at local levels, we can prevent additional uh, subsequent waves of this happening. Thank you. Um, I would like now to invite Gabriela Sotomayor from Processo to ask the next question. Gabriela, can you hear me? Yes, hola, Padela. Thank you for giving me the question. Um, I, ha I have a question regarding uh, Europe and the, the cases that we are seeing in Europe and, and the numbers. Um, what was done wrong? What happened, especially to prevent a dramatic scenario that we saw in March from happening again? For example, in China, there are 5,000 deaths. And in Europe, we have a quarter of a million. In the United States, it's 200 million. I mean, 200,000, sorry. So, um, the contrast in numbers is impressive. So does it have to do with the treatment they are giving in patients in China or in, in, in Asia? I mean, what, what can we avoid? How can we avoid to, to be in a dramatic scenario again? Thank um, you. I think that, that's a, an interesting